are. Hey, guys. <laughs> Hello. Happy Wednesday. Welcome to the show. You all know us. You know, I realized, Denny, the other day, every once in a while, you know, I'll actually watch something on social media, and people like to introduce themselves at the beginning of things, and we've just kind of, we just don't do that. Yeah, guess who we are. <laughs> <laughs> Take a guess. Any guess. What do you guys think? In any case, welcome. We are just on our good old SLC time. I think Tony is still struggling with Facebook because it has decided that it no longer wants to live stream things, uh, which has been a lot of fun for us. But in any case, screw Facebook. We don't need them. Hey, we're back on Facebook. <laughs> we're back on Facebook. <laughs> now we're in jail. <laughs> um... They need us. What are you kidding? Anyways, today, Denny is doing the shoulder holster pattern, everybody. Um, long awaited, much anticipated, and requested. Drum roll, please. Shoulder yeah. holster pattern. Alrighty, this is, if anybody is curious, or if you don't have it and you would like to buy it, the pattern number is 144-10050. That is 144-10050. We will talk about the things that you need as you go. Really, all you need is some double cap rivets, snaps, and leather, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like that's leather, leather. double cap rivets, snaps. Snaps. Uh, those yeah. are those snaps are the three things the that you will need. Yeah. Uh, plus, you know, construction oh, tools. Uh, some uh, Chicago oh, screws. Chicago screws. Yeah. Okay. And some Chicago. Oh, because these are adjustable. Yes. Yes, and that the Chicago screws are the adjustment. Gotcha. Alrighty. Alrighty. So I'm sorry. Four things. Chicago screws, rivets, snaps, and leather. That's right. All righty. Right. So Denny will take this away. Denny, we did have one person that um, had emailed me the other day and was curious about something along like a shoulder holster pattern, but for a revolver. So I don't know if as we kind of go through this, if you could talk about like how you might be able to alter if you have a holster pattern yeah. for whatever kind of gun that you are wanting to use. Right. Okay. okay. So anyways... We'll see if we can get to that, but you go from here. Okay. Uh, today, the only thing I've done is cut out the pattern for this. That's because he listens to me. I listen. To <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> Not well, but I listen. No, you do. You do. I hear things. Okay. So we okay. are doing a right-handed version. Yeah, I'm going to okay. do a right-handed version, and you, all you got to do for a left-handed version is flip it over. Does that mean that the gun goes on the left-hand side if you are right-handed? Yes, the the gun will go on the left-hand side okay. like this. Like I don't this do a lot with guns. Right yeah, yeah. You don't do a lot with. I don't. I don't do a lot with those. <laughs> I think okay. I have a lot in my house, but I don't. don't I ignore do, them. You try to. <laughs> They don't go off by accident? No. Okay. No. All right. No, no, no. That's good. Yeah. Okay. Now, in the instructions, it tells me that for a single ply holster, which is what we're going to do today, okay. we aren't going to line this. It's just going to be single ply. I'll need a piece of 8 to 10 ounce veg, veg tan leather, approximately 10 by 12. Okay. And that's just an approximation. No. You should have plenty if you have that big a piece. I've got a little bigger piece here. In fact, I've got two pieces. Sure looks like it. Yeah. Got a good old piece of Herman Oak. Herman Oak. That's right. So the first thing I'm going to do is lay out these two patterns. And there are just two patterns to the holster. So I'm going to just mark these on here. Tony's computer over there making noises. Okay. Still oh. And uh, that's that's for this gun, which is a rep. This is an airsoft gun, but it's a replica of a uh, Beretta. I think an M9 is what the number is on this Beretta. But it's a large frame pistol. Zero. He did say eight to ten, nine to ten, anywhere in there. You just want it to be a decently heavy piece of leather. Yeah. leather. What's that? No, oh, Tony's just oh. talking to Twitch, okay. I assume. And that's the way this this gun lays out on the on the pattern, the part that's against your body. Okay. Now, if I was going to do this for a revolver or anything else, I would do approximately the same thing. I would I would take a piece of paper and draw around the gun. Okay. And then, uh, <clears throat> since 
since up here on each side there's going to be a slot that the harness hangs from right down here there will be a and slot that hooks to your belt that's right so we've got these two slots go on this side and then the slot here on the bottom hooks to your belt goes right. down here <laughs> right so you just if you're making this for a revolver or a, or a different gun this this pattern will fit most large frame pistols okay uh, uh semi-automatic pistols we've got another pattern which will fit most medium size frame uh, automatic pistol. Okay. But if you're doing it for a revolver, you've just got to, you know, like move the, move the gun this way or that way, you know, stretch the pattern one way or another to make, to make it where it fits on the pattern. All right. Okay. There's not really much to a pattern. Just put it on a piece of paper and start drawing. And, yeah. You know, and then really with it. the most of that's going to affect is maybe like if you're adding a lot, you might shorten these straps slightly, but even then you may not need yeah, to. You might you just adjust your adjustment. I holes. don't think you'll even need to, to adjust that. Okay. Uh, I think the only thing that <clears throat> the part that goes over the top of the gun, you know, which, which will be like the molded part, like this, the molded part, you know, that's the part you will have to, to take into account. Okay. You know, because a revolver is generally a little thicker. Okay. But this is a big gun, so the revolver won't be too much thicker. The shape might be a bit different. But uh -huh. I bet I could fit a lot of revolvers in this particular leather holster stretches. Right here. Yes. <laughs> yes, and that's the thing. You know, this gun, this holster will fit a lot of different guns if you mold it to the gun itself. Yeah. And if you will look at this picture on the pattern, you know, it's molded pretty tight. You see that three-dimensional right there as I move my piece of paper around? <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll show you that uh, when we're finished here. Yeah. I'm going to scooch over here and try to read some of these while you, I assume, cut. Okay. Yeah. But anyway, that's about all I had to say about that. Now I'm going to lay out this other piece. Did I bring in a dead weight? Probably not. No, but I can go get no, it. No, that it You're good? I don't need it. Okay. He doesn't need it. I'll get by without it for now anyway. <laughs> and this strap here that I'm that I'm laying out, I'm gonna leave long because I'm not sure exactly I want I want it to fit pretty snug on the gun because it's your uh, your tie down strap. Gotcha. So this is oversized just so you can make it the right length. Yes. Okay. When and, you're done. And this part on, on the body side of the of the holster, this side is cut to size. And we'll go through that as we go along. But anyway, I'm going to put those aside. Get out my round knife here. I'm going to rough cut these off of this piece of leather. We've got South Africa in the house again today. All right. Awesome. Guys, my little bowl is, is done from last week. We made it into a uh, a dice, our dice holder for our live shopping. I still need to maybe airbrush it or do something, but he's he's got good shape. It came out pretty nice. I think it came out really neat. Yeah. There was this one little edge over here where the leather was a little bit flimsier and it kind of looks like a pore spout. But we can just pour the dice out. Look at that. Anyways. Looks like you got a nice firm piece of leather there, Denny. Yes, I picked as firm a piece as I could find. Oh, you make me nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I know you've been doing this for longer than I've been alive, so it's fine, but it still makes me nervous. <laughs> well, that's not my intention. <laughs> Change the sides of my knife blade because the other side is starting to kind of drag a little bit. All right, that piece is cut. And you really want a piece as, with as tight of a grain as you can get. Because when it molds, then it's going to, oh, yeah. 
we stole our trash can. We've been painting, guys, probably at the after party today. We will show you around the room a little bit. I'll show you what we've got going on. We uh, got it all painted. We finished up yesterday. Looks really good, too. It kind I of softens the feel a little bit from the all-white walls. Yeah, I hadn't commented on it, but you guys did a fine job. Thank you. Thank you very much. We're semi-professional painters. I am very good at getting paint all over myself. I had the first day that we painted last week. I had like paint in my hair and like up my nose. I wasn't really sure how I accomplished no. that, but um, that's that's what happened. Still making you nervous. I am attempting to not pay attention to what you're doing. Okay. And reading things and doing other things. <laughs> Just take some sips of the coffee over here. Oh, it looks like we maybe have a question. I can't read. Okay. I just learned about old world old world harness. What's the difference between Herman Oak old world harness versus regular Herman Oak harness? The old world is chock full of really. The, I mean, I I guess Danny, the old world harness is pretty much meant for reins. Is that like that is what uh, it is made for? Yeah, and actual harness and harness. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a, a heavier piece of leather for one thing. I'm mm -hmm. sure, and it's got uh, more tallow, more waxes in it. It's hot stuffed. Yeah. You know, they do it with all that, that concoction of what they do is hot when they put it on there and they rub it in, you know. Yeah. It's, it's they actually. Yeah, I do think that the harness leather. labor. Yeah, <laughs> you can buy harness in specific weights. The old world only, I think it comes in like an 11 to 13 and then a 13 plus. And that stuff gets super heavy. Um, just know that when you buy it, like we, we got a, an order in. Um, a couple of weeks ago of the old world and the coloring on it was different than coloring that I had seen before. But I talked to Kevin about it and even I, I reached out to Herman Oak and they actually have a really hard time making it when it's super hot outside because I bet they can't get it to dry with all the waxes and they're not an air conditioned building up there at Herman Oak. Um, at least not the, the tannery side. And so I was talking to Rourke about it and he was like, it is so hard to make that in the summer when it's this hot. Um, they just, they struggle with it a little bit when the temperatures get way up there. Um, but it is just an extremely heavily waxed, very thick leather. We cut, that's what we cut our reins out of, uh, the Herman Oak reins that we sell are, are, um, premium reins. And then just the regular harness, I believe you can, it does come a little bit more consistent thicknesses. Yeah. Um, and then in different colors. The old they, world is only that kind of like chestnutty, really just heavily waxed edge. Yeah. Most people like that the old world because it is so thick, but it's really thick up in the neck section. It'll get up like 20, so, 25 ounces. Yeah. So the reins that are cut out of it, if they cut it out using the tail end of the rein up on the neck, mm -hmm. it's heavier than the front, than the, the butt end of the hide. Mm -hmm. So it gives you, in, in essence, a set of weighted reins, Ooh. which... When you're holding a set of reins in your hands, a lot of times they'll want to work their way forward and you, you keep having to take up the reins. But those weighted reins, they, they hang down behind you and, and keep that keep the reins where they need to be. Huh. You don't have to fight so hard to, to stay where you want to stay. Interesting. Yeah. Things you don't know when you don't ride horses. Yeah. <laughs> All righty. Back to holsters. Okay. Now then, I'm going to cut these slots on this top side, the gun side. We need some granite. You want? You can right here. Okay. I'm just gonna pretend like I'm not here today and just sit in the corner. No, you pretend like you're here. <laughs> I can see you. Now, Do you just... all keep the class range? Um, EC ten machine. We. Would love to keep machine in the stock. I think right now we do have a couple of machines in the stock. I would have to check to see if we have a 26. We are 
slowly getting back to actually having some stock of machines. Leather machines finally getting caught up. I think maybe logistics are getting easier. Um, but for like, like since the pandemic up until probably mid summer of this year, we were back ordered by several months on most machines. So on the 26th, you just call in and talk to our customer service reps. They can look at the current orders that we have outstanding and they can tell you whether or not we would have one. If you do want to pick one up, you're more than welcome to order it. Um, and then we'll let you know when it's here and we'll schedule a pickup or like, you know, once we get our next shipment, um, so you just kind of call and see where we're at. I don't personally know where we're at with machine orders at this moment. I, I used to have my finger on that real close, but I don't anymore. So that's where that is. Got that. Yeah, we got that. <laughs> All right. Next, I'm going to do a little bit of edge beveling here because after I stitch this, you won't I, won't, be able to bevel. I won't be able to get to this certain parts of this. So I'm going to bevel from about right here. And this is a number two Western Edge beveler, but you can use whatever beveler you've got. Now I'm going to bevel the bottom side of this. The, I don't know what I keep doing back and the forth. The barrel end of this. Piece. Um. So they uh they ask if you could use the old world harness for a holster. Uh, it wouldn't be ideal. It won't mold very well. Yeah, it's not because it, it's so stuffed with waxes that it's the whole purpose is that it doesn't absorb water when it's out in the wild. That's that's the purpose. So it's not going to. Yeah, it's it's probably not ideal. Yeah. You know, you can use anything you ever want to use, but to being the best for the job is, you know, that's the main thing you need to take into consideration. Yeah. But if you're poor like I've always been, <laughs> you kind of use what you've got. What do you mean you've been poor? These people over here saying that you invented leather. I did, but they didn't pay me for it. <laughs> the cave people and I all invented leather together. <laughs> <laughs> Those cave ne people. Neanderthals. Yeah. I think that's the correct pronunciation yeah, yes. of that if one. You're from Newfoundland. Neanderthal. Neanderthal. Yeah. That's how they say it in Newfoundland. Is it? I forget what show that was that we used to watch. <laughs> but there, and my wife, she started doing that and she can't stop now. But they don't pronounce it th with a th. Mm. They go t. Your your mother. <laughs> <laughs> and your father. <laughs> All right, oh. I got that done. Now I'm going to wet the front side of this piece of leather. I'm not going to soak it all the way through because I'm going to put some cement on this backside and I want it to hold good. So I'm just going to wet the front. But I'm going to wet the whole thing, not just part of it. Because we don't want water spots, guys. No problem, Heath. Not a problem. Okay. <clears throat> now I'm going to cement this. First, I'm going to... Oh, I forgot. We need to scratch because why? Yes, I need to scratch. We need to scratch because we're using the front side. Yes. Now I'm going to make a mark here. I'm going to stitch it out here. You guys hear me muttering to myself? Yeah. I do that a lot. Thank you so much. And I've got a little tray work here. Did I laugh? I did my Janice laugh this morning for Russ and Ryan because I stole their vacuum for like every day this week. And then I haven't returned it. Either they've had to come find it or Tony took it back for me a time or two. Um, trying to get in on the good with Ryan and Russ. But today when I took it, I did, I did take it back to them. But I did the Janice laugh because I just couldn't help it. 
This mark here I'm, is on the pattern. I'm going to scribe it on here because that's where I'm going to spread my cement to. And here I'm going to go around this way. Actually, I'm going to go across this way. Yeah, about like that. I'm going to scratch this up a little bit. See if my cement will hold good. Now, if you want to make yourself useful. Yeah, I would love to. You Can could, I glue? You could see it that. Okay. That part that I scratched. That's all I want in life is to be useful. <laughs> Denny, you only talk to yourself when you need expert advice. <laughs> Who said that? I'm going to give them a Rob. Raise. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a good one. I love it. Oh, do you need me to, to glue a little bit quicker? Sure, as quick as you want. <laughs> okay. And while you're uh, gluing the other piece, uh, you don't need to glue. Yeah, go ahead and glue it. Okay. Yeah. Whatever you want me to do. Okay, on this one, just glue this bottom part because I want to leave that okay. unglued for the moment. Now I'm going to make some noise here with the hair dryer. Now I didn't I didn't have her glue the top part of this because I'm just gonna stitch this bottom part first. This this bottom part has the big curve in it. So we only put glue on this side. Sorry. Yes. yes. No glue here. Yeah. Because if you see here, this is quite a bit wider than our than the body piece. So we've got to make a bend in it. But this straight stitch line will lend itself to that final bend. Molly asked, what direction should I keep my new glue pot in when not in use? Uh, Denny actually kind of had fun with this one right here. And he glued a couple of sponges to the bottom to keep it um, sitting like that to where most of the glue will, will pull back here and not be up in this section. Yeah. So that's this is how Denny, this is how his glue always is. Yeah. <laughs> if anybody's curious. Okay. But in reality, it doesn't matter. No, you know, because when you keep that the cap on that, no air gets to it. Yeah, it stays pretty good. Yeah, and Denny just likes that so that there's not so much glue in here, so that his there's less glue on his brush. He has a little bit more control about how much glue he puts on his brush. Exactly, that's really it. Exactly. So, but I don't think Dean has the best answer, which is facing north. You should always have your glue facing north. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Some people just can't resist, can they? <laughs> What's up, Bourbon Leatherworks? Welcome to the show. Glad you could make it while we're still here in person. I mean, we're always here after. It's just not in, in person anymore. All right. Now. So that back section is decently oversized for yes, you to then yeah, trim it. I'm going to be trimming. Okay. Okay, now I'm being fancy here. Ooh. That's a stitch line also. That's a stitch line. 
that's opposite of the way that it's on the pattern, but that doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Okay. Not to me. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go to the machine here. Can I do that, Tony? Sure can. Oh, uh, can you move? Yeah. Oh, we'll just think. That's better. Okay. And <clears throat> this is damp, so there you're going to see a machine mark, but that doesn't matter to me. Usually, I rub most of it out by the time all is said and done anyway. But if it does matter to you, wait till it's dry. That's right. I'm on a backstitch, Tony. Good job. Hopefully nobody out there in our live audience is in the path of the hurricane that is currently making landfall. So everybody stay safe if you are in that area. Maybe. Oh, what did you do? Uh, my machine's doing something it shouldn't be doing. Well, we didn't test it. <laughs> I did before I brought it in here. Here's what it's doing. It's wrapped around the Probably when you ran in the door. Probably. Did I do that? Yeah. Did I do that? <laughs> uh, let's see here. Right David says, how many times can you add thinner to glue before it becomes useless? Until you run out. Yeah, I was going to say, or until maybe once you find that you're... you're it's not holding. Like I've had the same bottle of master's contact cement of like a little quart of it for quite a while. And I feel like at this point, like I've been complaining about, I feel like for the past month, I went to make my knife sheath, uh, the last sheath that I made. And I was having problems with my welt adhering um, to the front panel. And like what, every time I went to put my all through the leather and then out the back, it pushed that backside off of my welt, which was driving me crazy because then you can't get a very good, burnish on the edge when they're not adhered properly so i mean well, if you're starting to get like to the bottom maybe it's just time to buy a new one but if you have like a half a can of cement it should be fine still if if you put your cement in a in a dispenser something like this or any mm -hmm. other kind of a dispenser just don't put very much put about what you're going to be using in, in the immediate future yeah yeah you know, don't over don't over uh, don't think it's going to sit there for six months and be happy. Right. Yeah. And honestly, I mean, the glue is still in the bottle. It's the alcohol that's evaporating out of it. So like the glue is just thickening. The glue isn't going anywhere. It's just the alcohol that makes it runny. So for the most part, you, you should be fine to thin for quite yeah. a while. Yeah. Don't over thin. That'll, because that'll uh, subtract from the, Adherence qualities of the, of the cement itself. Because then all you've got is the alcohol. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Mm. Well, keep safe, Heath. Uh, let's see here. Any issues when barge starts looking like honey? Stir it. It's probably a lot of the solids have, have settled to the bottom. Mm. Stir it up good or shake it. Get yourself it. a paint stick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It'll get kind of clear looking and I've seen it do that. Hmm. All right, here I go again, folks. Backstitch. Hey, Tony. There's quite a few of you out there that are down in the hurricane area. 
Everybody's just sitting there getting rained on, watching us craft some leather. I, I appreciate all of you guys. <laughs> How do you know if you have over thinned the glue? Uh, it'll get runny. Don't ever make your glue runny. Make it where you've got it. <coughs> Show them about how thick that is, because that's that's about perfect the way I. You want to go to this one? All right, so. Uh, See how it drips off the brush there? It doesn't just run off, but it kind of oozes off. Make it oozy. Make it oozy. Wee. Is this like visual ASMR? <laughs> All right, that's enough for the glue. That is just right. I feel like I feel like the viscosity of glue and then the correct like moisture content when you're tooling leather are are very semi like they're like the same thing like it's like the same concept right of it right. like it needs There's to be just experiment right. experiment yeah. yeah you can see me at that part now hi hi captain <laughs> Woo. get my glue back over here guys the paints the paint smell is still strong in here like fall off my stool <laughs> but that's why you're happy exactly one of the reasons <laughs> my vacation is getting close but yours is closer oh, where are you going denny we're going to new mexico we're going to go to oklahoma for a couple of days okay and everybody says why hey i actually have there's a old museum that my I think it's in like a uncle or a lost cousin or it's not, it's not an uncle. It's, it's, um, but I think it's my mom's uncle maybe has a museum out by the sand dunes. Yes. I know and where I think, that is. Yeah. I think you should go there. That's Teddy. His name might. is Teddy. The guy. I'm pretty sure it's Teddy. I made him an apron a long time ago. I've never met him. Oh, we don't have any paper towels. Just rub it off. It's glue. <laughs> but. All right. Paint or glue beams, both. Yeah, Rob. When we were there last time, we were at, at a visitor center, mm -hmm. and they told us about that museum. Yeah, the sand dune. Yeah. yeah, that's what we'll do. I'm related to those people. Are you really? I don't know if I should be okay. proud of that, but I am. <laughs> when we go, I'm gonna say, "Remember Liz? <laughs> she said hi from the leather store." Yeah, Liz said so, hi. Yeah, you should. Now I've got to bend this. So your glue should be a cross between honey and maple syrup. <laughs> Correct. It's just right. But now see the big lump I've got there? That's where the gun's going to go. Because the backside isn't, isn't going to... Uh, you don't want to shape it. You don't right. want to mold it. You just want to mold the top part. So you've got to have enough slack there to do that. Right here. Okay. okay. Thanks. Is that okay? Uh-huh. <laughs> Thanks, ma'am. You're welcome. <laughs> From the captain, your ma'am. Is a class five a sewing machine? Mm, not that uh, I'm... Oh, there's a class... I believe that's a hurricane. <laughs> yes. <laughs> category. Cat category five. Hurricane Dean. And this is Master's Contact Cement for the 128th time. <laughs> Dean. No zippers, Dean. <laughs> no zippers, Dean. Alright. Here we go again. Uh. 
Mm, that's a great shot at the back of your hand. Thanks, okay. Dave. Well, I had to hold that. <laughs> Can you see anything now? Nope. But it's fine. What are you seeing? Just the holster? Yeah. Okay, I'm about to turn. <laughs> oh, and then we'll go around. Yeah, I'm going to go around. And then we'll be on the other side. Then you'll side. see the other side. Everybody, hold utter, on tight. Other side. The other side. How close do you want that light? Hmm? I said, how close do you want that light to that? Well, uh, is it in the way, too? You are so demanding. <laughs> Here, look, I've got the sound almost, almost good. Now you're getting it all screwed up with the lighting situation. I don't know about you sometimes. I don't either. <laughs> I ask about myself a lot. Yeah, expert advice. No, no one has a good answer. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome, Dean. I'm glad I can get you taken care of. That's really my whole goal in my whole life is just to make, make Dean happy. Make Dean happy. Or make sure that people have the leather supplies that they need. We do have some more shearlings for tomorrow, everybody. Um, so make sure you check out. If anybody is looking out for a shearling, we should have another decent batch of them. Maybe twenty, another 20 to 30. I'm not sure how many we've got yet. Um, shearlings to, to put out tomorrow in the live shopping. Wait, we didn't talk about that. What? Oh. Yeah, we did. Was that part of that? Yeah. How does the sound sound for everybody else? That's what I, I've kind of been monitoring it the, the whole time, so I haven't been really paying attention and or talking, which <laughs> might make some people happy. I'd say something, but I'm not going to. Oh, don't be shy. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you later. Any of those. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, guys, I'm not sure what the... Like, I've looked through the box a few times, but I was looking for specific ones for some people. Um, and so I don't offhandedly recall. I can... Maybe that will be what we do, is I can go over there and I can grab the box. And then for the after party, I will show off some of the shearlings that we'll have. And you guys can kind of see what we've got. I think... I mostly pulled a lot of the ones with the fun colors, so these might be a little bit more tame colors. Like, I definitely don't think we have any more blue ones, and I know that we don't have any more red ones. Although, Striker, Striker, are you out there? Because you never emailed me, and so I pulled you two red ones, and I was going to say, I have the picture already taken, but you never emailed me, and I don't know who you are. So... If you wanna, if you are interested in those red ones still, and you're, I think, I think I've seen you a few times. And if you're still in here, email me, Liz at SpringfieldLeather.com, and I will send you the pictures. Otherwise, I'm going to sell them tomorrow. I'm are going sanding machine. All right. Back. Oh, that means I have to entertain. Look. Irish Molly says, "Sounds fine. Quit talking." So here's this is this is for this is for her. <laughs> okay, Liz, you can talk again. Okay, now we're back. <laughs> Molly, don't... He'll do it. <laughs> He's the most ornery. He can be ornerier than all of you guys put together. I guarantee it. If he's in the right mindset to do so. Which he usually is. That's why he has the big salt shaker. I didn't mean Liz. Oh, I muted it for everybody. <laughs> okay. Um, I didn't see anything. So, I mean, maybe it went to my junk. I usually check my junk so, a couple times. Brand? You can. I check my junk every Liz, now and then. Liz, could you make that bowl out of chrome tan? No, because chrome tan does not mold. It does really doesn't love to absorb moisture, um, and it won't hold its shape. So this has to be a veg tan. So you can use bridal leather. You can use, like, the drum-dyed Herman Oaks. Um... Anything that is veg, I know that um, 
Marvin had been making some two ply where he would use a chrome tan leather glue to a veg tan, but he kind of said that kind of took a lot of practice and could get tricky and he didn't love it. And also he took them to shows and those were the ones that didn't sell the, like the fastest, the ones that were just veg sold the best. Bourbon, so. Bourbon Leatherworks, before you get started, Denny, Bourbon Leatherworks has a great question and hopefully in the next two days, the goal was by the end of this month to get international shipping available on the website. Oh, so how's that going in the next two days? Are you feeling? Are you feeling good about it? I mean, we've got live videos today, tomorrow, and the next day. So we're not feeling good about this month, but maybe next week. If I quit talking and get back to work, maybe. That's right. Okay, I'm just uh, beveling the edge of this, and I forgot to bevel the edge of it. I mean, Bourbon, you definitely you can still order. You just have to email the store. Um, what, international at springfieldleather.com? Yeah, right. international at springfieldleather.com. And we can still ship. We just have to manually. The reason that we don't have the, um, like, shipping option for internationals is because, like, we can't send Phoebe's dye. Like, Phoebe's regular dye cannot go internationally because it's flammable. And it has to go through the post office. Um and then there are exotics that we can't send internationally because of CITES, you know, or the fish and wildlife regulations. So there's just, we, we would hate for somebody to like put a bunch of stuff in their cart and then we have to contact you like after you purchase and be like, sorry, you don't get any of this. So we've been having to go through our entire catalog and say, these things can go internationally and these things cannot go internationally. So it's just been a lot of back end work and then also making sure that our um, shipping programs like properly supports international shipping options. Yeah, we have about 30,000 SKUs that we have to go through. Yeah, every one of them has to be marked before we can do this because otherwise it just won't work. So be patient with us. But if you are in, like, if you do want to order, I know that it's a little bit more of a hassle. You can just, you can still create an account and you can still put things in a cart. You just can't check out. So if you just want to go ahead and do that, you take a screenshot or just leave it all in your cart. You can email International Springfield Leather. We can pull up your account. We can look to see whatever's in your cart and we can put the order in. Like we got ways to get it done. And it is. And all that. And all that. Back to Denny. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I've got this trimmed and the edges beveled. I haven't uh, burnished the edges, but. And then I wet the top, not not the body side of this holster, but just the top. Just the top. And let's see how this little burn fits in here. Don't break it. Got to get our ticklers out. Yep. Thanks, Jessica. Teresa's in Africa. That's fun. Perfect. South Africa? I don't know. I, it, Africa is large, Teresa. Where are you specifically? Just down to a country will work. We'll yeah. just, just narrow it in from the continent to a country. Ed says I'm slightly muted. That's because I'm across the room. And to block out the noise of all the computer fans in here. And mouse clicking. My bad. <laughs> and chip munching. <laughs> Everybody say hi to Justin. Hello. Those are all of his noises. <laughs> all right. The gun fits in there pretty doggone nice. So it, I guess if you wanted to do, could you make it a little bit shorter if you're, sure, you know? Sure, you could. You could, but the, I mean, I guess the that end is, of the barrel is, is right there. Yeah, it's just like a quarter of an inch it's, from the end. There here, it is. So. Yeah, you guys see that. So plus, really this one is fine. Plus when this dries, it will actually, the leather thickness will actually shrink a little bit. Mm -hmm. And this gun will actually slide in a hair further than it is right now. Because mm, that moisture is making it all fat. It's fat yeah, leather right now. Yeah. Okay, now that I know that's going to work, let's set our snaps and our little thumb break. Okay, well, Teresa, thank you for being specific, but I can't pronounce that, so it's cool. Thank you. Um, so military deployment in Djibouti. Djibouti. You are correct. <laughs> Yep, 
Yeah. So for you, we can actually, I mean, typically we're shipping to an APO for the military deployment. Um, still most like the international things apply, no flammables because it's got to go air and things like that. But uh, usually it's cheaper to an APO than if you're just actually like just regular international. <laughs> Uh, yes, you can use a pistol mold. Then he's actually using an airsoft gun. Yeah. Do the blue guns work? Or I've seen uh, people take a um, 3D printer and print out their own model. Yeah, so if you have that, you could do that. Um, if you're using an actual gun, I would say probably maybe put it in a plastic bag yep. if you're actually going to leave it in there. Yeah. Or maybe that's just good good etiquette anyway, just to put your gun in a, in a plastic bag before you put it in a nice, wet piece of leather for it to absorb moisture. That's just usually good protocol. What about the sight rail? Sight rail here. here. If if you will sorry if you will notice there's a little lump overhead? there. Yes. But by the time by the time all is said and done I'm gonna get rid of that and I will show you how to do it. But I want to set these snaps in, in this thumb break first. Okay. We're getting there. Soak the leather in rubbing alcohol. Well, that'll make it stretch. That's what boot stretch is for the most part is just alcohol. Oh, really? Mm hmm Okay. You know what happens when you can't move the camera? Move the table. Yeah, blue guns are not the cheapest thing. Um, but, you know, I mean, if you make a lot of holsters, it's... And kind of, you know, maybe just start... Just get a couple here and there. You can buy, you know, one or two at a time until you build your arsenal of blue guns. Jenny? Yes, sir. <laughs> Am I at a spot? I can't see nothing. You've got, you got, oh, you leather. got leather. You've got leather in front of it. Oh, hold on. Just stay where you're at. I'll, I'll move to you. Leather. Nope, you're good. Stay where you're at. Just don't do anything. You just got to wait patiently for right now. Mm -hmm. Please. And thank you. I can't wait patiently. Sorry for I, anything that I might have said that has irritated you. It all yeah. irritates Just me. let me know which one it is and I'll say it again. Are we ready? Nope. Dean, it's just an... Okay. Let me airsoft. turn I guess. this. See what I've got there? Can you see me now? <laughs> uh, can you move to your right just a little bit? Oh, perfect. Yeah. Now I can see you. Okay. Here we go. I'm just going to set this rivet. All that because I'm going to set a rivet. Well, what are you, you, know really what are you riveting to? I'm riveting did, this. This oh. is a little video on setting rivets on there. Yeah. On okay, YouTube. so we're doing the thumb break. Yes, this gotcha. is a thumb break, and all the thumb break is is a stiffener. Okay. And I'm putting it on the back side so it's not visible from the front. If you were doing a two-ply, you would house it between. Between. Okay. Yes, yes yep. ma'am. That's 100% correct. Denny, what's your style of setting rivets? I just showed you. Mash and flat. Just mash and flat with a metal hammer. Uh, to me, that, that sets them the most definite of, of any thing you can do. Yeah. You can use a rivet setter, but I have trouble keeping one centered so I don't blotch the leather. So. Okay, now I'm going to put a snap on. But since this snap is not going to show... I'm going to use the, the flat side of the post on both parts. Guys, I tell you what, if you, so if you want to start making holsters and offering that service, maybe what you do is you say, okay, every time I get an order for a gun style that I don't have a blue gun for already, that first holster gets an extra $25 charge. So you're not charging the cust like the first customer the whole price of the blue gun, but it's about half the cost. And then, you know, like, I mean, you can, there, there are ways to do it or, you know, let the person know like, okay, I don't already have that one. So I'm going to need to buy it. And that means you, your hostel will be whatever that it is. I mean, you, exactly. Like you, you have the ability to work that into your pricing. Plus, it's a business expense. Yeah, and it's a business expense, so it's a write-off. Like every blue gun, you know, if you pay taxes on your business every year and don't do what Denny just did, but, you know, 
What just, did I just do? You just used a metal hammer on your tool. Oh. Don't do that. You write it off. <laughs> you write it off when you have to buy a new one. So is that leather shoulder leather? Um, it was probably from a section of the shoulder. Can Not you make one out of the belly. No. A little stretchy. Yep, little well, we talked about in the beginning, you want a tight, firm grain. So preferably not cut from the belly. Somewhere in the back will make the best, especially like I guess like if you're making a vertical holster, you might be able to get away with a little bit stretchier of leather because it's holding it this way. But this one is sideways and you don't really you like you don't want this to start stretching and falling. Like you want it to keep it shape and keep it where you put it. All right, and I'm going to make this extra snug because, like I said, it's going to, uh, this leather will uh, actually shrink in, in thickness by the time it dries. Plus, I want it, to, it will never get any tighter. It will only get looser Correct. from here on out. I told Denny to make sure his phone was silent. He said it was. Sorry, folks. <laughs> That's a happy little dance tune you got the on there. The doctor calls. All right, now I'm going to. Yeah, I mean, yeah. There's a lot of strap. you're you're doing leather work to make money, and hopefully the customer understands that. And if you don't have a customer that understands that, then maybe it's not a customer that you need to do business with. <laughs> so I didn't bring an in. I do also when I'm making a knife sheath. I won't make a knife sheath unless I have the gun, or I'm unless I have the knife. Like, that's just my, I need to make sure that I know, like, I don't want somebody to send me a pattern of their knife because maybe they're not a great pattern maker. I don't know how thick, like, the spine of the knife is to make sure that the fit is correct for my welt. Like, you know, making sure that they have, depending on the style of sheath that I'm making, if it has a finger guard on it, I want that guard to butt up with the top of my sheath perfectly. Like, I want that fit to be, to be good. You know, if they're requesting a strap with a snap on it, which, number one, I hate doing, but I will do it. Um, I want to make sure that that fit is nice and tight and everything comes together correctly. And I just, if they're not willing to send me the knife to make a sheath, I'm usually not willing to make the sheath. So, um, keep losing your clip. All right. Now we're all fit. I've got my strap cut with my thumb brake. Which works perfectly. Well, look at that. By the way. Hey, come over here and show them that action one more time. Okay, I got it. Then just make sure your head isn't in the way. <laughs> My fat head. <laughs> All right. Boom. I'm going to make a little confession in this moment that I have never seen a thumb break in use before. <laughs> really? And I've always kind of wondered how it works. <laughs> <laughs> I just learned something. Yeah. Okay, this is that sight rail that everybody was talking about. But <clears throat> you just got to stretch the leather along that. <laughs> Everybody's freaking out that you have a smart cell phone and not a flip phone. They can't believe it. <laughs> uh, well, it's it's called a smart cell phone because it's smarter than I am. <laughs> and when he got it, he came in and he was like, "Uh, Chris, Chris, I need I need some help here." <laughs> Tony, I think Tony helped him. Tony helped me. And ev ev everybody's helped uh, Diddy with this phone. All right, now let's shake this a little bit. Well, let me get on that. Oh, get your fat head out of the way. Oh. Diddy? Nope. Still not. There, there we go. That's good. That's okay. See, you blame it on me. You're the cameraman. I, I got the camera right on it. And then you put your... Fathead All right, if anybody's commenting on Facebook, I can't see it because cool. I it's not scrolling for me. Probably something else to do. I think you just have to click on the new comment button because Facebook's dumb. But if there's anything that I need to address, you could let me know. A cartilage holder. <laughs> a cartilage holder? I, I called it a clip and it's not a magazine. And now we're all freaking out about that and making fun of me. A clip is slang for a magazine. <laughs> I don't need to be throwing and any I'm, slang I'm, out here. And I'm sorry that some people don't. 
Do you sell the one-way snaps? Sure, we sure. do, Vanessa. We sell, they're called, um, uh, pull the dot. Pull the dot. Yep. And we, you can buy just the inside pieces because they will fit with, they will work with any line 24, um, cap and stud. So you can buy just the insides. You can buy the socket and the, no, no, no. The stud and the, the socket go inside. The post and the cap are the outsides. Yeah. There it is. Um, so you can buy just the inside pieces to set with your own line 20. And I will say sometimes that is a better option because the post that we have on the cap and the post are quite short for our pull the dot snap set. Like only if you're using, I think four to five is the thickest that you can set them on and they'll actually set happily. So I might just tell you to invest. And we do sell all of our line 24 parts individually. So you could buy like a 10 pack of caps and a 10 pack of posts and then put them with, you could buy 10 packs of the inside parts or whatever it is that you want to do because we just sell those as single sets. Don't for try the to use box. them with a thumb break though. Oh no. <laughs> oh, because you can't twist. <laughs> There's no twist. Yeah. You'd be breaking your thumb. Yeah. You would be fighting a losing battle. All right. Now, I guess, since everything fits, I ought to burnish the edges on this. What did you do with your siding? Huh? Uh, I just stretched it a little bit, and I will stretch it a little bit more here. Okay, I'm just making sure you didn't forget to show us that part. Striker wants to hear the best burn. Rob was saying the best part of SLC videos is the crews razzing each other. I said, Rob, I'll razz them too. I mean, razzing, razzing me who controls whether the video is playing or not, or any cameras are showing anything, or any microphones are doing anything. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's pretty bold moves there. Nice. Whoops. Oh, well, yeah. I'm assuming we're not going to get to anything else today, so we're just going to move those out of the way. We will get the holster assembled, and then next Wednesday we will do the shoulder harness assembly. Yeah, I will probably build the magazine holder tomorrow. Okay. And we, I can just kind of go through it for everybody. Oops, I probably ought to put some water on that. Oh, we ought to wet the whole thing since I got that part wet. Larry, the Herman Oak split, like as long, if, if you got a thick enough one, use that back section that has, that is the firmest, tightest grain, and you'll probably be fine. On uh, this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It would make a great holster. In fact, the revolver holster that we did a uh, video on, I used a, a rough out. Oh, you sure did? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It wasn't a split, but a split would work the same way. Function. And I will also clean this with oxalic acid after it's. I also take care of the website striker, so. There'll be other things for me to do. He does the website. He takes some pictures. <laughs> we do the live shopping, which I guess is also a camera thing, but. Don't worry. I got plenty of other things to do. <laughs> I was going to show them. I was going to show the YouTube uh, Black and Tony, but it's too hard to set up. <laughs> My wife's daughter in New Zealand knows uh, one of the what's the indigenous tribe over there? What are they? Mor mm. Morang or something like that. Anyway, one of those one of those guys wanted to watch our YouTube videos. Mm. He mm. said, "How do I get those?" I said, "Go to YouTube and punch in Springfield Leather Company YouTube." Uh huh. But the internet is everywhere. It should be fine. Everybody, hold on. Here we go. There we are. Then I said, that's as far as I can tell you. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> N-A-O-R-I. N-A-O-R-I. Yeah, Maori. Maori. What are you doing now? 
Now I'm stretching out this back where the where the, where the site. site rail okay. goes. But this is something <clears throat> I just sit there and worry this stuff until it gets tired of me and it does what it's supposed to do. Carl is saying he's got the hol holster part down. He needs the geometry for the shoulder. Well, that will be next Wednesday. That's next week. Yep. Or, yeah, next Wednesday. Next, we got trading cards on Friday. Yep, Friday is the last Friday of the month, so we will be here with Kevin doing some trading cards. Um, so everybody get your get your tool and tools out, and we'll all make trading cards together. What can I use? We don't have a screwdriver in here, do we? I did. I took it out of here, though. Mm, would good. there be one in the in the little compartment sure. of the? Well, that's a good idea, Larry. Anyway, what are you trying to do? I was just sticking something in there that I could stretch it while the gun is in mm. in there. That's pretty good, just like that. Though. All right, folks, I'm going to call that good for right now. So, did I mean, did you talk about the whole site situation, or were you just going? Yeah, yeah you, just okay. need, you just need to run something in there and stretch that out and shape it so, so that the site actually uh, has a spot to ride into. If you don't, this, this part here will sink in, and right where the actual front side is, you'll have a lump there, mm -hmm. which I still do a little bit, but I... I've got a tool, a long screwdriver, or I'll take this and actually stretch on it for a while here. So you'll just take the gun out and you're just gonna you're yeah. just gonna stretch that top yeah. side. Maybe ream it back and forth. You go to the side shot, Tony. <laughs> what is that wood thing and how do we get one? It's a worrier. You, what you do, here's how you get this one. <coughs> you can get an exact copy of this if you buy a loofah sponge on a stick. Uh-huh. And wear the sponge out and then tell your wife, don't throw that away. I want that stick. So just like one from Walmart? Yeah. So guys, this is a loofah sponge stick. So go just find. a handle. <laughs> yeah. So just go find a loofah that has a wooden handle. Um... There you go. But otherwise, like, I mean, Denny has just. Yeah, just. So we we sell like a bone folder. Um, we also sell wooden slickers. So this is either going to be called a folder or a slicker. Yeah. So kind of just look around for different versions. We have a couple different ones. We've got some nylon ones. We've got some bone, like horn slickers mm -hmm. that we sell. And then we have um, some wooden ones. Yeah. So that's all that this is. Denny, I think, has a collection of maybe like five or six of these. Yeah. Um, and I have and a different piece shapes of, and, and things. I have a nice piece of smooth deer antler, too, that works really yeah. well. And you just, all kinds of, just get all sorts of different shapes because you yep. never Any know. Any hardwood that you can slick up and yeah. smooth or find a nice loofah handle, yeah, that's, that's great. That's bamboo, I believe. Probably, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, and this is so. a piece of maple flooring. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Robert S. says that tip was worth the price of admission. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the mission was free, so deer yeah. antler is, <laughs> is a that's a good one. Yeah, deer antler worked really yeah. well, especially yeah. those of you out there that are hunters that like to collect those or walking through the woods yeah. and pick them up. That's yeah. a great, it's yeah, a great just option. find a nice smooth piece. You don't mm -hmm. want to use down yeah. there towards the not a nerdy piece. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the, the key word here is slicker. Yeah, <laughs> slick and smooth. So. You okay? You saw the rougher early. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see here. Dino uses a wooden dowel. Yeah. Um, for the padded adjustable strap for the tripod stool. Oh, there you go. So there. Yeah. yeah you never know what's going to be useful. I'm yeah. Afraid. Don't throw anything away. <laughs> yeah. Just hoard all of it, guys. <laughs> Every little thing. Don't do that. Don't don't do that. Um. Striker says, I've got lots of bone folders, but that wood handle is interesting. Yeah. Yeah. The neat part is it's it's round. Mm 
Mm -hmm. you know, doesn't have any sharp edges on it. Yeah. And this, I think it is bamboo because the grain doesn't raise up on it when you get it wet. Huh. And that, that's the worst part about a lot of wood. When you get it yeah. like rubbing on a piece of wet leather, you know, the grain will start to raise and yeah. it's, it's not very smooth anymore. But. Yeah. All right. So lastly, Denny's going to take this back and he's going to stretch out that back where the side is. So I think that's kind of the most important part that we're not going to show here that you need to just keep in mind is that you want to make sure that the leather has been conditioned to allow for that sight rail to go in. Yeah. And so you're going to, he's just going to take this and he's just going to keep working it until that leather really probably until it starts to really dry and yeah. stay. Yeah. When it you're starts gonna, to dry a little more is when it will shape the best. Yeah. 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 So Otherwise, how wet it is now, it's just going to want to keep shrinking down to the size. So yeah. that is what he's going to do. And then... Um, punch these slots, of course. Punch, punch See, the slots out. It goes right here like this. Does it? Is that where it goes? Yeah. Okay, cool. Somewhere in this vicinity. Tuck it right up, in. Up, down, back, forward. <laughs> hey, Liz, Zero had a great idea. What's that? What if we start cutting your bamboo... Into bone, into uh, bone folders. Folders I don't, Okay, so that's literally what I was just... I was sitting here looking at this piece of bamboo. This is not the bamboo that I have in my yard. I mean, I've got some good, like, poles like this, but it's not thick. Like, it's it's not this. Yeah. Well, when you cut it, you only take part of it, and you flatten it out. No, you don't flatten it. You can't hardly change the shape of a piece of you bamboo. You just got to get your bamboo... Yeah, you've got to have a I heavy I think this is... The, yeah, this is... That's special. Ten, ten year old bamboo. This is that's, special that's bamboo. That's jungle bamboo right yeah. there. Mm. I mean, I have a small jungle, but it is, I do <laughs> cut it down semi regularly so it doesn't, I just have little tiny. Yeah. I mean, I've got, I've got decent. I you cut some from Maddie. Shoots. I do have bamboo shoots. Those you can just kick over when they're real little. <laughs> uh, the big ones, I took my chainsaw to them, but I do have, I do have some decent, probably like this big that I've saved for Maddie because she wants to like hang her herbs from the ceiling and dry them. So. I cut her a couple if like you, 10 foot stocks. I have to figure out how to you, get them to her house. If I don't you know. Build how to do a that fire yet. and kind of singe that bamboo, it will make it so it lasts well. Otherwise, yeah. it's real brittle and it breaks very easy. But they use okay. fire to cure that. I will let her know. Yeah. She can do that. That's cool. All righty. Um, how tall is my bamboo? It's <laughs> all the way to the top. It's as tall as my two story house. Sure is. Some of it's even taller. I don't, anyways, I don't love it. Uh, let's see here. So Friday, we'll be back with trading cards. Tomorrow, we will have live shopping. We will show you some shearlings here in a little bit for our after party after we show you what the room looks like. And then um, next week, we will finish the shoulder holster and we will do the harness construction. So the only thing I think you said that we're not going to do on the thing is the magazine holder, which is yes. pretty darn straightforward. It's it's fairly simple. You can talk about it a little bit once yeah. you got it made. Yeah. Okay. And then we'll do the shoulder holster that is, you have to say that slowly to enunciate shoulder, those words. Try to shoulder say journal makers fun. Yeah, that one is also hard. <laughs> you got to really uh, enunciate those words too. All righty, folks, have a great uh, rest of your afternoon, and we will see you tomorrow for some live shopping. Bye. Bye. Bye.